in the shaft of the uh, right uh, humerus. Uh, with right the, femur, you meant, huh? Right humor. Uh, right femur. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right, right, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, right, the uh, femur is showing uh, an osteolytic uh, lesion. Uh, this uh, osteolytic lesion is seen medullary in position. Um, it's seen, uh, it's uh, involving uh, the shaft uh, and uh, the greater, uh, tro uh, greater uh, trochanter. Um, the lesion is, is scalloping the, uh, the uh, cortex uh, and uh, uh, scalloping the cortex and uh, I think it's eroding the, the cortex. Uh, there is no obvious uh, soft uh, um, tissue. Uh, I think it's wide zone of transition. No obvious uh, soft tissue. I think uh, I'm not sure if there is soft tissue component outside. There is no. I can't see a soft tissue component. Uh, this is a mature skeleton patient. Uh, so um, uh, the, the uh, I think this is an um, uh, aggressive uh, lesion. Uh, mo uh, mostly, uh, maybe will be uh, uh, regarding to the age of the patient. This is maybe uh, maybe metastasis. Uh, uh, there is also coarse trabeculation. Oh. There is a coarse trabeculation inside the. Uh, okay. So, so what comes to your mind then? Uh, if of course trabeculation, I think this is maybe budgets disease uh, involving uh, the, uh, the, the, the femur, uh, the right femur uh, in my routine practice. Okay. I, what is this? Okay, madam, we'll come back to that. What is this? Uh, sorry, I can't see. I can... One you minute. cannot see? Uh, because, uh, one minute. Ah, oh, yes, there is a uh, well-defined uh, lesion seen in the uh, left uh, femur. Uh, this lesion, uh, this is maybe Boone Island. Uh, it's a uh, well-defined... Uh, actually, it's well defined uh, with the areas of calcification. Uh, this is uh, maybe uh, in chondroma. It's a uh, mid medullary and uh, it's a medullary and uh, uh, well defined has uh, areas of uh, uh, calcification. So, it's right. Made, uh, so, what is your conclusion? My conclusion for the left uh, femur uh, lesion, uh, this is a benign lesion, maybe in chondroma. And for the right one? For the right one, I think this is maybe budget disease because of uh, coarse trabeculation and expansion of the bone. Okay, thank you. Bone island on left and Paget's disease on right. So let's discuss this. Now, what exactly is bone island? Mm -hmm. uh, look at the definition of a bone island. Bone island is the focus of compact or cortical bone located within the cancellous or the medullary bone. So this is the cortex and this is the cancellous bone, which is the medullary bone. And basically this bone sits here. Key points, what are the key points? It is dense, it fades at the periphery. So this is our lesion, and you can see that it fades. Just remember that word, it fades at the periphery. And there is merging with the normal trabeculae. I'll, I'll show you on, uh, you know, dicom, uh, just to blow it up and see that there are surrounding trabeculae. It, it merges with that, and then, Look at this word. It has got an edge which is brush-like. You know, look look here, brush-like. Again, I'll, I'll show you um, on Osphyrex. On the other hand, Paget's disease, I'm not at all going to go into Paget's disease, the detail, which might cost me another one hour if I show you everything about Paget's disease. But please remember that Paget's disease has got various kinds of presentations. And this is what exam is about. You know, early present presentation, late presentation, uh, lytic phase, sclerotic phase, uh, mixed phase, uh, 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 with complications like fractures or osteosarcoma, etc., etc. 
Paget's disease is extremely important for the exam. Uh, three things which are extremely important as far as the variety of uh, presentations, one in bone, one is Paget's disease, second is, is fibrous dysplasia, and third one is hyperparathyroidism. I showed you, I think, one or two uh, sessions ago, many cases of hyperpara. I can show you uh, 10, 15 cases of pagers, but I don't. that's not my aim today. But I am showing you an uh, early type of pagers. This picture from StatDX tells you everything, what happens. So, uh, loss of normal cancellous architecture. So, the cancellous bone is inside. You remember the, the previous picture? This is the cancellous bone. Look at the trabeculae, right? And look here, how thick they are. There is loss of cancellous architecture and replaced by coarse, thick bundles of trabeculae. So oh, uh, so this is what it is about. And then the cortex itself, it will also be coarse and granular. So th these are the key findings of Paget's disease. Uh, now, uh, I don't want to go into details, with, you know, which you can read yourself, but one point I want to make is that uh, early lesions can be lytic, thin cortex, then later on mix lytic and sclerotic. So everything can happen. And then disordered thickened trabeculae and cortical thickening. So once you know this pathophysiology, you can make the radiology. So this, this was, uh, this is a full-blown case of Paget's disease where just to highlight how the, the cortex is thick uh, and then is bone expansion. In our case, the bone expansion was not to that degree because that is also pathognomic for Paget's disease, bone expansion. But having said that, Please also remember one key thing about Paget's disease is that it extends all the way to the articular surface. It goes all the way to the articular surface. One exception to, to this rule is tibia, where in tibia it might go to the superior uh, tibial tuberosity and might not go to the articular surface. And so this is about Paget's disease. Now, Let's go back and see the case. Now, first of all, let's see the right side. Let me now look at the trabeculae, how coarse and thick they are. It's quite a unique finding. You will not see this finding in any other condition like this. And then cortex, even a lucency in the cortex, you know, slight bit of expansion here, slight bit of expansion uh, should not bother you. If you look carefully, try to try to see, let's see the trabeculae on the normal side, which is this one. Just concentrate here, concentrate here, and look at these trabeculae, concentrate in the subarticular region, which is, uh, you know, uh, just inferior to the joint. And you will agree that actually early coarsening of trabeculae can be seen extending all the way here. It's not all that fine. So, uh, of course, this patient will develop more advanced uh, Paget's disease in, in the coming uh, years. Now, as far as our bone island is concerned, just see how classical it is. Uh, that it has dense, dense, uh, you know, look at the margin, brush-like margin, and it merges, it fades at the margin and merges with the adjacent trabeculae. So these are two uh, different cases, uh, sorry, two different pathologies just for discussion. Okay, let's go to the next case. This patient, 
कैंडिडेट वन दिस पेशेंट वॉट हैपन वॉज दैट द एंड यू नो द गैस्ट्रो एंट्रोलॉजिस्ट दे वर डूइंग क्लोनोस्कोपी एंड दे फेल्ट दैट देर इज something extraneous this were the clinical notes which was compressing the rectum and they asked for an mr when so when they did a colonoscopy so i am scrolling for you uh, let me scroll up and down and then you can give me your initial impression so i've gone up now i am coming down once again okay uh, i can see um this is a mri uh, mri uh, this t2 uh, t2 uh, sequence uh, showing well defined the uh, well circumscribed the uh, uh, cystic lesion showing heterogeneous uh, texture uh, heterogeneous uh, content uh, the lesion is seen compressing the uh, rectum uh, uh, compressing the anus and uh, rectum a uh, lesion is seen well defined it's not uh, well defined with good fat planes uh, with the uh, uh, pelvic uh, muscles Uh, also uh, also it's uh, it's it's compressing the the colon uh, but it's not invading uh, the uh, the sigma uh, the, uh, the rectum uh, in my routine uh, practice i'll check uh, the lesion on the fm t t1 fat set Uh, uh to uh, know the uh, content if uh, if there is a blood or a fat uh, uh, signal inside the this lesion so uh, sig- signal inside was low signal on t1 if it's low signal uh, on uh, t1 uh, this is excluding uh, blood and uh, excluding uh, fat uh, content uh, so uh, this lesion may be enteric uh, cyst uh because it's a benign looking lesion okay uh, at this yeah. one i i i have given you a sagittal okay oh uh, maybe uh also uh, no this is a wait uh uh this is uh, i think it's uh, maybe uh, also we want uh, a uh, lesion is away from the uh, spinal cord uh, and the foramina so this is excluding a neural neural uh, neural lesions neural origin lesions so um this is maybe the, if it's also oh, it's not teratoma uh, so uh, i think this is maybe enteric enteric cyst um what is the sex of the patient Uh, a six of the patient uh, it's uh, i think it's male male patient male patient because he has a penis here so uh, yeah. he is male maybe uh, there is another also differential diagnosis but i am hesitated because it's not uh, uh, i may maybe seminal vesicle but it's uh, it's behind the 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 the, uh, the colon so like it's where is the prostate where is the prostate prostate should be in front not in, uh, in uh, behind like uh, do you see the prostate no i can't see the prostate okay uh, we we did a ct for this patient okay. this is the ct finding is it, uh, there is calcification inside the lesion uh, calcification this calcification the mm. dense was quite high it was sort of a metallic type of density is is does patient have any history of uh, surgery like if the patient has any history of surgery this is maybe a metastatic uh, metastatic recurrence uh, from uh, prostate uh, prostatic cancer after removal of the prostate okay this madam is- thank you thank you Oh 
Right. So, yep. yeah, it came to your mind as you were. You you can see the diagnosis. Ah uh, yes yes. Ah. Uh, so this is a Gossi pipe coma. Uh, the patient had prostate surgery. I will come back to you. The prostate was not visible on that MR, and this makes it a story case. The case tells you a story. These are favorite for the exam. A case which tells you a story. You have to uh, sort of think what the story is. Uh, I'll come back to the case. This is another case uh, of a Gossi Gossi by Boma. Basically, Gossi by Boma. The word Gossi by Boma means uh, Gossipium. The Latin word for cotton wool. Boma is a tumor. Uh, some people also use the word textiloma. uh and this is another case this is not this case this is another case now basically please remember that it is a sort of a never even type of, of a thing in uk uh, but over the years i have seen quite a few cases and many of them have been operated overseas basically please remember now the protocol is that they use gauze uh gauze uh uh the surgical gauze which is used has got thread this thread is barium impregnated so there is there is barium there what is the concept in the theater they are extremely diligent on this there are protocols about it how many cotton swabs were used and the nurses they will count it they will recount it and after everything has been done they will count it again and suppose if there is a discrepancy in the counts then what happens is they take a x ray you know on fluoroscopy they on the image intensifier which is available in the in the theater and they try to see it so that is the concept of barium impregnated thread so that it can be seen in a, in a patient you know on the table live on the table now what happens is that these things do happen i have in my uh, clinical practice i have even seen forceps artery forceps being left inside and people travel from overseas with the forceps i don't know how did they pass through the customs etc in any case now uh now uh in in this particular case uh just one second so this is another example uh, from literature uh so the radiological features depends they will vary the, you know one of the radiological feature is that you can imagine you know uh, there can be air inside air might get trapped inside and they might get trapped inside forever they can be inert This means the patient there are case reports where people have done case report 37 years down the road you know uh, uh, swab was found inside so it, it can be inert on the other hand it can cause uh, acute infections etc and beware of something else many a times they can fistulate so fistulate from one part into another part of the gut and patients have vomited these you know because of uh, fistulization and they have also passed it through the feces so these kinds of things have also happened uh, but uh, the gas bubbly type of appearance that's the most common otherwise the appearances can vary key point to remember is that on mr you you cannot diagnose it on mr because it will be very unusual when you look for it ask for a ct on ct look for this high density barium it is metallic so it gives you this artifact once you uh, once you have seen that you have got your diagnosis now if you see here uh let's go back to your case hmm 
Now, here, mm. nobody can diagnose it just on this basis, but this is the rectum. It is displacing the mass. Mass has got, you know, unique type of appearance, honeycombing type of appearance, but there is some fluid, etc. It looks a benign type of a mass. Key thing is here on axial also, your mind should have gone to this thing. Is it male or female? You know, if it is a female, then where is the vagina? If it is male, then you have to see the prostate. It's missing. And uh, and uh, then on sagittal, it is absolutely clear that the prostate is not there. What does it tell you? The story. The story is that the patient has had prostatectomy. And this prostatectomy was eight years ago. And, and then uh, we did a CT scan which showed this. This is absolutely pathognomic here. You see thread shape and look at the density, look at the artifact it is producing. So uh, this was a quasi biopoma. Okay, then. Next case, please. Uh, candidate one, this is your last case. Over to you. Great. I'm presenting case uh, abdominal radiograph showing a soft tissue lesion in the uh, left uh, uh, left uh, hypochondrial um, region. The soft uh, tissue uh, lesion is uh, showing punctate of uh, calcification. Uh, there is, uh, I, I want to check uh, the wound. Uh, the, the lesion is showing, first lesion is uh, I think it's uh, um, it's seen inseparable or covering the uh, the uh, psoas, uh, the psoas uh, muscle in the FC lateral side, uh, left side. Um, I want to check if the lesion has any uh, relation with the uh, surrounding bone or any uh, other uh, metastatic lesion. Um, I can't see um, uh, any lesions in the. Uh, in the uh, vertebra. Uh, also, uh, I see uh, the visualized uh, uh, ribs are seen uh, normal. Uh, I can see certain lesion. Uh, the lesion also uh, displacing the bowel loops into the contralateral side, to the right side. Um, uh, um, uh, my uh, uh, in my uh, routine uh, practice, I proceed into a CT abdomen uh, to check right. the. What is this? Uh, 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 this is oh, uh, uh, I can see a, fo a focal uh, osteo uh, mixed uh, lytic sclerotic lesion is seen on the uh, right uh, on the left. Uh, I'm sorry, in the left uh, iliac uh, bone uh, related to the uh, to the uh, acetabulum. Uh, this uh, lesion is uh, uh, maybe uh, as it has a high trabeculation. Uh, this is uh, maybe either uh, uh, budget uh, uh, disease or metastatic from the upper uh, uh, the 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 left uh, left soft tissue lesion. Maybe it's metastatic from the soft tissue lesion. Um, uh, so and uh, okay, I have I have now given you a CT scan. Now because you cannot scroll it, I am going to scroll it coming from the lung down. I can see pleural uh, effusion uh, and the uh, uh, soft tissue uh, lesion uh, see, uh, is seen on the uh, 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 in the intercostal region, um, multiple soft tissue lesions. Uh, uh, in my uh, routine, I'll check by, uh, um, by uh, check uh, lung window uh, to see if there is any other lesions uh, in the uh, lung. Uh, okay, there is a collapse for the uh, left uh, for the left uh, lung uh, collapse, uh, and there is also a nodule. Uh, I can see a nodule seen in the base uh, lung. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, then uh, uh, I want to check the abdomen at the area which I saw the soft tissue lesion in uh, in the right hypochondria. Um, 
ااا ان ذا ليفت اي ام سوري ان ذا ليفت هايبوكوندريا ااا ذس دي دي رايت اتس دي رايت اتس ذا ليفت ذا ليفت كيدني از شوينج ماركت هايدرو نيفروزيس with the market hydronephrosis with areas of thinning out of the cortex. Uh, this is associated with the su- surrounding uh, 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 fat, congested fat glands. Uh, I want to check if there is uh, the cause of the obstructive, uh, of obstruction of the, uh, of the, of the uh, kidney. Okay. Again, uh, I want to, uh, there is also this uh, osteolytic, mixed osteolytic uh, lytic lesion uh, seen on the, uh, uh, in the um, left iliac uh, bone. Uh, this lesion is showing soft tissue uh, component uh, and uh, uh, this may, um, it's uh, affecting the uh, the uh, the iliac uh, bo- the posterior part of the acetabulum uh, and the iliac uh, the uh, iliac bone uh, also conclusion. Conclusion. Uh, conclusion here this is uh, maybe a metastasis uh, um, i want just uh, uh, this is maybe a metastasis of the renal this is not uh, hydronephrosis this is a lesion in the kidney, this is maybe RCC with uh, metastatic bone uh, disease. Uh, and uh, also there is a nodule in the, uh, in the, in the uh, nodule in the lung. And uh, so, uh, okay. and thank you. Also, uh, thank you. Subcutaneous nodules. Okay. Subcutaneous nodules. Okay. okay. Thank you. Now, uh, Renal cell carcinoma with bone mats. Uh, the idea here is uh, there there are meta- metastases which are which cause what we call blowout bone metastases or expensile bone metastases. Mm-hmm. Uh, whenever you see them, uh, the top two tumors are renal cell carcinoma and thyroid carcinoma. Otherwise, hepatocellular carcinoma, pheochromosoma, melanoma, gastric carcinoma. Now, these two should be up there. And there is an appearance, we call it soap bubble appearance. Soap bubble appearance is also, uh, particularly in pelvic bones, look for these uh, two. Now, if we go back to this case, uh, the key findings here are that there is a mass here, which is obliterating the left swast muscle. So it might be or renal origin or uh, which is what the candidate uh, pointed out. Now, uh, the, there is a lesion here. Now, immediately, once you pick up this lesion, initially, the mind goes into this. Is it a GO? Because there can be subartic, there are OA changes here. Is there a GO? And you look carefully, and on uh, you can see that there is expansion, there is a bit of lucency, a bit of bubbly appearance. Uh, this is not at all a geode, it's more than that. So this is a classical appearance of, uh, you know, a bubbly uh, metastasis. Now, this particular case, I am showing you, this is a classical case, actually not for a viva, but for a long case. There are many types of cases which come in long cases. And one of the type is, as I am showing you, where the case is simple, but the findings are multiple. And the everybody is going to pick it up that this is a RCC. And most of you are going to pick it up that this RCC has got bony metastasis. But uh, you know, look for everything uh, very carefully. Once you describe the RCC, see if, uh, you know, the classical description of an RCC, because please remember RCC, they go into the renal vein. 
and from the renal vein they go into the IVC and from there they can even travel all the way up into the left atrium and that is an exam case. So that should be your pertinent negatives that you know the renal vein now this is the renal vein and in our case it's not going into the renal vein. Mm -hmm. Otherwise uh, what it is doing you know where is the adrenal so the adrenal is fine it is not going into the adrenal but there are multiple nodules for example even this is a nodule there are multiple peritoneal and retroperitoneal nodules look at this 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 nodules now if you go up here look look here this is a nodule here there is a, a nodule here of course uh, the candidate did pick up uh, lung uh, metastases which were sitting you know here but the fine touch of it is look at the left-sided diffusion now look at the pleura and you will appreciate that the pleura has got nodular appearance enhancing nodular appearance look here how nodular and enhancing it is look here what is happening and this is causing effusion. So somebody who has mentioned that nodule in no, uh, uh, plural metastasis will definitely get half a mark more, isn't it? This is how the examiner is going to discriminate between uh, those of you who will get six and those who will get more than that. So uh, this is satisfaction of search case. Easy case, but multiple findings. To pass this case is very easy. But to get more marks, you have to highlight each and everything. Now, there are upper abdominal lymph nodes. There is para-aortic lymph nodes. There are, uh, as the candidate uh, also pointed out, there are soft tissue nodules. So here you are. You see these nodules are soft tissue nodules. As far as bone is concerned, uh, this is a classical soap bubble. This is a classical soap bubble lesion. If you if you see this, this is a classical soap bubble lesion. But having said that, uh, having said that, we we can uh, see further metastasis. Further metastasis. For example, another soap bubble is here, and uh, if you go for a sagittal. If they have provided you with a sagittal, you go for it. On this sagittal, uh, there is a spondylolysis grade one with bilateral uh, spondylolysis with listhesis. And uh, we can go right and left, look for anything happening in the in the ribs and, and you might pick up something. Actually, there is a lesion here in the ribs. So, why I'm showing you this case, it's an easy case, but these kinds of cases, they come in the exam for satisfaction of search and multiple findings. As far as soft tissue is concerned, another thing is that around the bladder, there is a lot of fat stranding. So there must be some infection as in cystitis, etc. happening. Okay, candidate one, thank you very much. Candidate two, are you with us? Yes, Dr. Colonel. I'm here. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, please. Over to you. I'm presented with frontal radiograph of uh, a child. Um, I cannot see the femoral heads. Uh, so this child, I'm uh, assuming that child is less than six months of age. Um, there are abnormal uh, confluent periosteal uh, reactions seen involving uh, both both uh, the diaphysis the diaphysis of both TB and in the left uh, fibula as well. The briosteal reaction is not extended to cover the epiphysis. It's only on the diaphysis. Um, the bone density is maintained. There is no uh, loss of bone density. Uh, in my routine practice, I will I will window the a little bit the uh, the. Uh, the radiograph to check the bone and magnify the image and also see the lateral view as well. So the, this, the distal femoral epiphyses and the proximal tibial epiphyses are normal. The uh, metaphysis looks normal. 
So um, I would like to confirm the age of the patient. If this patient is less than six uh, uh, months, this could be uh, presented with pain and swelling. Um, uh, I think. What do you think is the age of the patient? What do you I think? think? It, I think is uh, six to eight. Um, less Why do you than say eight. Six to eight. Because the femoral uh, heads are not there. It's, very, it's, it's so not what very is much. the age at which the femoral head epiphyses appear? Six months, six to eight months. Okay. So I'd like to see the, uh, uh, so in, the, in this, uh, this patient uh, has pain and uh, swelling over the, uh, the lower limbs. This could represent infantile cortical hyperostosis, the cafe disease. Although I would like to review also the ribs and the clavicle and the mandible because it's most common in this side. The other possibility would also include uh, um, uh, uh, vitamin, uh, uh, prostaglandin E administration uh, due to, uh, due to uh, abnormal congenital heart disease, uh, which kept uh, patent access to use as patent. So this is another possibility. Um, the other differential, but not in this age, uh, thyroid and uh, but it's not it's not uh, it's not uh, in this uh, age group. Uh, so I'd like to review the uh, clinical, uh, the uh, the lab and the clinical history of this patient, and uh, see uh, uh, see also if this has any uh, previous uh, imaging. Uh, the other possibility also could uh, could be a, a primary pachydermoviriostosis also. Um, but usually it covers the uh, it doesn't extend to the uh, to the metaphysis as well so anything else in the differential uh, it's not classic for a scurvy it could be due to uh, some periosteal hematoma but it's not very not very typical for it there is no uh, tumor field zone uh, Wimberger sign or absent uh, but uh, could represent also subriostal hemorrhage as well. Anything else? Mm -hmm. Can I see the lateral view? If it's available or, or ribs? That is not available. Mm -hmm. You. Uh, what is your differential just on the basis of this X-ray? So infantile cortical hyperostosis, cafe disease, and prostaglandin E administration, and primary bacteriomyelitis. Okay, thank you. I'm going to spend a bit of time on this one. This is my favorite differential diagnosis in Chapman. And uh, so I teach a lot on this. And the idea how to tackle a case, uh, actually this can be a presentation itself. So, but I'll, I'll keep it short. Uh, uh, now, oh, by the way, a uh, message uh, regarding this course, uh, anybody who wants to attend this, uh, you can see the email there, dubaifrcr at gmail.com, face-to-face uh, -face was six hours and uh, 12 hours of uh, eight hours duration over two days. You can also be an observer. It's face to face in Rashid Hospital in Dubai, 31st August, 1st September. So the email is given there. And, uh, uh, you know, anybody who wants to uh, avail this chance, it will be absolutely brilliant for you. Now, KF is disease. Now, just uh, slightly come out of the case and the top tip for FRCR exam in, in the exam is that uh, regarding the differential diagnosis cases is that the examiners want to hear the differential diagnosis in that case, which they are showing you. They do not want you to regurgitate the list from Chapman or from wherever you have learned it. Candidate did very well, but slightly off target, which I, I will highlight. Uh, slightly off target, but uh, at least did not, you know, enumerate everything. Now, uh, 
you whenever you get a differential diagnosis case you i i define it like this that your theoretical knowledge left side of the brain your differential diagnosis in the right side of the brain and as you are talking the differential diagnosis is coming into your mind and you start actually uh you know using pertinent negatives for example you remember in this case when i asked the candidate said scurvy and then immediately gave pertinent negatives so i like that that because of this it is unlikely to be scurvy uh, so you have to really train your mind on this so the differential diagnosis list should be in your mind you should remember the list but tell the examiner what is relevant in that particular case according to age sex when it is relevant location of the lesion and the radiological features if you regurgitate all of the list you will be penalized remember this you know for example a classical case of simple bone cyst what else can it be you know they sometimes the examiners are going to grill you what else can it be and uh, so the method is that even if you say something then rule it out that because of this i did consider this however because of this it is not this uh, but if you do this kind of a mistake where uh, you say on a simple bone cyst and the and the examiner is asking can it be malignant and you lose your confidence and you say it can be malignant then you will be penalized for that so remember that so whenever uh, in that scenario be confident if challenged be confident this is a extremely important message and there is no shortcut to have this confidence you know it takes 2 years of uh, training your mind or on differential diagnostics and doing lot of hot seat sessions in your department with your colleagues or your uh, you know your teachers please remember that some cases will be for discussion only and i could have gone on on discussion in this case if i wanted to now this differential diagnosis is periosteal reaction bilaterally symmetrical in children do not confuse it with periosteal reaction bilateral symmetrical in adults which the candidate uh, did because uh, pachydermoperiostosis etc you know that is another age group another age group age is critical in this differential diagnosis two things which i want you to add include non accidental injury and hypervitaminosis a i will quickly show you the salient features of all of this and then we will have a discussion on the case so please remember that you have to remember this differential diagnosis number 1 number 2 in the left side of your brain you have to remember the main radiological features first of all is physiological so you see here normal infant means physiological juvenile idiopathic arthritis acute leukemia rickets kefis disease scurvy prostaglandin e1 therapy congenital syphilis and then i have added to it non accidental injury and hypervitaminosis a so all of these should be in your mind and uh, this is i am quickly going to show you the features of all of this uh in today's lecture or today's session this is the main component where i am going to do a bit of teaching now this is a 7 week old baby uh, uh, and typically these are less than 4 months there is periosteal reaction subtle periosteal reaction usually upper diaphysis of ulna bilateral symmetrical you see here and here so these are the and our case was not at all like this now look at this one jia it should not be even considered in the differential diagnosis uh, uh, in in jia what happens is that there can be periosteal reaction 
around multiple phalanges and there can be soft tissue swelling. So for example, there is periosteal reaction, periosteal reaction, periosteal reaction. Look at the age. Age is two to four years. Our case was less than a year. I'll come back to the case. Now, let's go to another thing, acute leukemia. Acute leukemia is a bad kind. We know that leukemia, when it will involve the bone, the bone will not be normal. In our case, the underlying bone was normal. But key point is, even before that, is the age, three to seven years. It cannot happen in our age group. Uh, and you can get this, this bone is known as a moth-eaten bone. Moth-eaten bone uh, is per se a differential diagnosis for the exam. Uh, and you can see that there is periosteal reaction and it can be bilateral also. Then comes rickets. Now, rickets is interesting. Uh, in rickets, what happens is, uh, can there be periosteal reaction in rickets? It can be what we call a pseudo-periosteal reaction. Might not be seen in each and every case. Remember this. But I'll come back to that point. The typical age group is 3 to 18 months in initially, usually in the wrist. Then when the uh, toddler or the child starts walking uh, in in the knee joints, etc. Basically, you are looking at distal metaphyseal cupping. And what is this? Pseudo-periosteal reaction along the shaft of both tibia, and there can be bowing of tibia and femur. What is pseudo-periosteal reaction? Please remember, it will not, you will not see it in each and every case. Remember this. But in some cases, you can see it. Look here, you can see this periosteal reaction and maybe here also. What happens is if you go back to your normal metabolism of bone, uh, where in a child, you know, there is uh, growth, osteoplastic, osteoplastic activity under the periosteum. So there is new bone formation. It is normal, normal physiological. But this new bone is devoid of calcium. So looks like a uh, uh, lucency and overall gives you an appearance of pseudo periosteal reaction. So th that is why rickets has been given in the differential diagnosis. Uh, and then we go to next case. Oh, uh, so, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to go into details of this, but it is beautifully uh, summarized in Chapman in page 614, see this diagram and please revise everything on rickets. From there, we come to uh, this, this is Kefi's disease. Now Kefi's disease, by the way, our case was also Kefi's disease. The candidate did very well. The candidate asked for clavicle and uh, mandible, etc., and that is what it was. Uh, look at this case. This is an exam case where there is periosteal reaction along the diaphysis, thick periosteal reaction. Look at the clavicles. Clavicles are involved. Clavicles right and left is involved. You cannot see the mandible, but actually there is a bit of thickening of mandible. And typical age is less than five months. So it starts less than five months. I'll come back to Kefi's disease. It is idiopathic without any reason. Uh, periosteal reaction along the distal radius or left ulna on right side. Uh, so I, I'm just reading it. Uh, you know, uh, actually, this is whatever ever is written is the findings are here. Now, then comes scurvy, another differential diagnosis. Scurvy is very interesting. This is scurvy. And I, uh, you know, uh, you should read it from your Chapman. Uh, there is a concept of book memory. Even if you have read scurvy from every any other site, any other resource, read it from Chapman 623. There is a diagram there, and you will remember it in your mind. Wimberger sign, uh, which is reduced epiphyseal density, pencil thin cortex, all of the other things. What happens in uh, scurvy is that sometimes, not in all cases, please remember, not in all cases, 
there can be uh, there can be um, hemorrhage under the periosteum which causes this periosteal reaction this this hemorrhage periosteal reaction key point key point to remember it cannot happen less than 6 months of age because uh, the child uh, has got enough uh, vitamin c through the mother then we go to uh, prostaglandin e1 therapy case from radiopedia basically the concept is that these patients they present with cyanotic congenital heart diseases and they want to uh, uh, you know the patent ductus arteriosus they want to it to continue and at a later stage they might do surgeries etc and for reasons which are not very well known it causes osteoblastic activity and lot of periosteal reaction right and left another thing which for unknown reasons the sutures you know they are widened also so uh, there can be periosteal reaction uh, all along this is one of the differential and then comes nai nai uh, where you will see metaphyseal corner fractures uh, and then hypervitaminosis a in hypervitaminosis a there can be periosteal reaction in periosteal reaction typical age group is more than 6 years and then comes sc- uh, congenital syphilis please remember that syphilis has got a rebound as far as uh, numbers of cases are concerned in uk and of course uh, uh, overseas it is much more common and you can see these kinds of cases key finding in congenital syphilis is that other than periosteal reaction you will see metaphyseal erosions you see this aggression metaphyseal erosions now once uh, all of these things are in your mind and the case comes in your exam then you can simply go through them one after the other in your description as you are describing you will rule it out when the examiner grills you you can simply uh, defend yourself and and do not agree on any other differential and be very emphatic get maximum marks now uh a few things about kefis disease kefis disease is idiopathic infantile uh, cortical hyperostosis age of presentation is about 9 weeks to 5 months so less than 6 months uh, there will be hyperostosis where will be hyperostosis many bones are involved but the candidate did very well mandible is one of the pathognomic mandible 80% of patients have mandible the patients will uh, of course a young child uh, the word pain uh, is difficult to you know elicit or mention the patients will be very uh, you know irritable they will cry they will have thick skins uh, and look at the clavicle and the scapula can be involved not in our case the uh, ribs can be involved so whenever you get this thick periosteal reaction along the diaphysis remember this along the diaphysis epiphysis are not involved ask for uh, mandible ask for clavicle and this is what it is what is the natural history of kefis disease kefis disease is a self limiting condition it can cause a bit of deformity as in bowing etc but gradually uh the child grows out of it so this is kefis at at uh, you know 5 months then 6 months then 12 months you have become better this is periosteal reaction in another case of kefis disease and this is another case in which there is periosteal reaction periosteal reaction look at the clavicle clavicle and uh, this is the periosteal reaction and look at the mandible as if from here to here is the thickness of the normal mandible 
from here to here is periosteal reaction. You can see how thick it is. So, uh, coming back to the case itself, so in this case, first of all, age. Please remember uh, the age you are going to tell the examiner. You cannot ask the examiner why the epiphysis, uh, femoral head epiphysis is not visible. What is the normal age of appearance? In, in girls, it is, it is uh, uh, two to six months, slightly early, two to six months. So six months is a good point to remember. In boys, it is three to seven months, but there might be a subtle discrepancy in various sources. So generally speaking, even in boys and girls, it cannot appear maximum six to seven months, it, it will appear. So this is a child which is definitely less than eight months or you know close to that. With that, you have got a periosteal reaction which is thick. And this thick periosteal reaction is along the diaphysis. And it is not involving the epiphysis. With that, there are pertinent negatives. There is no metaphysial erosions. There is no, you know, the scurvy rule that out. No Wimbergen signs and Pelkan spurs and Trummerfield zone, etc., etc. No cupping, as in rule out rickets. And uh, of course, ask for a mandible, etc. But all said and done, there cannot be anything else other than, um, you know, I think prostaglandin, you can keep it in the differential. Other than that, other conditions, because of the age group, it cannot be considered. So this is a very good exercise, very good differential diagnosis, uh, which is a landmark differential diagnosis, a flagship differential diagnosis to learn the art for your exam. And uh, candidate uh, two, you did very well, but please remember, Yes. Pertinent negatives, you should have spoken there and then. And yes. echidermoperiostosis, is, that is adult. Uh, so please remember that. Okay. okay, thank you. Well done. Now your next case. My Osirex has collapsed. So let me share it again. Right, so this was your case, and now we go to what is happening. Uh, can you see something? Yes, I can see a sag the T2 uh, abdomen. Right, okay. So let me let me go through it. Uh, this is a case in which a uh, 26-year-old female, uh, they did a community ultrasound, and they said that there is a simple cyst in the left lobe, and they said that there is a focal lesion 1.2 centimeter in right lobe. And because of that, an uh, MR was done. Now, uh, we can see the cyst here, so I don't want you to worry about the cyst. And we can see, uh, this is the right lobe which I am showing Dr. you. Can, uh, Dr. Kemp, please, uh, the, the, the image are so blurred, I think. This is a different, uh, yeah, yeah, this is much better now, yeah. It is much better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. now it's good, yeah. So I'm, I'm showing you a T2 and uh, there is something here, I don't want you to talk till now, uh, forget about the cyst. And please remember it's a 30, 26 year old. Ooh, now we go you know? to, oh my God, it has, it has gone, it has gone out, isn't it? Just one yes, second. Yes, yes, yes. Let um, me zoom it out. Okay, now, uh, now, now... Now we're back to the third image again. I think... Uh, mm -hmm. I'll stop share and do... Mm -hmm. 
и ну, ну. Just one second. Yeah, sure. I think the quality is fine. Yeah, yeah. No, the image is good. Yeah. Okay. Now, yes, the quality yes. is fine. Looks. Yes. Now, now, I, I, I am unable to present all sequences together, which I was aiming to. So, because of the time factor, I'll talk you through it. Now, this is which phase is this? Can you ask me? Uh, can you tell me? Uh, this, this. Uh... Uh, T1, uh, more to Venus, please. Most contrast, T1. And, and that's uh, it, it, it. And And more to Venus, phase, yeah. This is the mass. Yes. Right? Yes. So, what is it doing? It is enhancing. Yes. This is a pre-contrast T1 weighted sequence. On the pre-contrast T1 weighted sequence, this is the lesion. It's slightly then, high. Yeah. Then we have got a. If you see here, this is the cortex and this is the medulla. It is it is not exactly a venous phase. It is a late arterial early venous type of a phase, right? Yeah. Now in that phase, we can see that it is enhancing. What is your differential diagnosis till now? So in the early arterial, it's enhancing significantly. It could be a, a flash hemangioma. There is a possibility. Um, um, I would like to see it on the delayed also image to check if this wash out or no wash out in this image. So right. This is uh, out of phase. And out what is the appearance on out of phase? The out of phase, there is a drop of signal, I think, on the, uh, on the liver itself which means yeah. uh, there are some, some fatty components or fatty liver or steatosis. Right. And the lesion, the lesion So we have got another phase here. Just the arterial, arterial. arterial, yeah. Now look at the cortex and medulla. Of this is the late phase, I think. It is venous phase. That was a... Venous, yeah. 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 Now, this is the lesion. You are still enhanced? Yeah. Like the portal? So yeah. follow, follow the portal phase. So I'd like to see it on the delayed. Further delayed phase? Yeah. This is further delayed phase. So the R centripetal filling, I think it, I think it's uh, uh, benign. There is no wash out in the delayed image, delayed sequence. So this excludes uh, a possibility of malignancy. Uh, so this could represent a flash hemangioma. Uh, uh, rapidly filling hemangioma. There is also central scar. I would like to see it in further delayed image if it's if it's enhanced or not, because this might represent also FNH for condylar hyperplasia with enhanced scar in the late phase. Which so, what do you mean by the late phase? I mean uh, 15 to 20 minutes. 15 to 20 minutes. Yes. Which contrast media will you use for that? Uh, I can use Brimovist. Uh, a metabolic phase like this one, and this one there is there is common bile duct secretion of uh, gadolinium. No, no, no. Excuse me. Uh, so I'm just listening to you. I'm showing you something else, but don't talk on the sequence. Just it was a theoretical question. What, what oh, yeah. You... So I'd like to see the enhancement of this car with uh, this central hypo hypo intense signal uh, central. Hybo what is your differential diagnosis before that phase? What is your differential diagnosis? Uh, differential diagnosis would include a flash filling hemangioma. I would like also to see the arterial also to. Okay, uh, to this, is a, this is a T two weighted sequence, and this is the lesion. It is. Do you, do you still want to keep hemangioma as your? No, no. Now, now it's it's low. So excluding hemangioma now, it's 
it's a focal nodular hyperplasia. Anything it could be related focal nodular hyperplasia or adenoma. Adenoma. Okay. The differentiating agent is a primovist. We can use it. Uh, so in the FNH, it will drop signal on the primovist and uh, it will not enhance because uh, uh, it, uh, it will enhance, sorry, because it will take the uh, contrast. But in uh, adenoma, it will not take the contrast. Okay. Now, hypervascular focal lesions in the liver are very important for your exam. And please remember that, uh, of course, the world is more complex than what is on this slide, but just remember what is here, and you cannot go wrong with this. Now, uh, it can be benign and it can be malignant. Benign FNH, adenoma, hemangioma. Uh, and malignant HCC, mass forming or intrahepatic cholangiocarcinoma and hypervascular metastasis. Uh, please remember that one of the key, uh, key um, what we call concept is washout. So on MR, uh, there is an early phase which is arterial. It is slightly delayed than a classical, what we call a CT angiogram phase. It is slightly delayed. Uh, and that is why you might see a bit of portal vein also. But look at the kidney and you will see that the cortex and medulla will be different. Uh, arterial phase, then venous phase 70 second, and equilibrium phase 3 to 10 minutes. Now we utilize this on MR. On a CT scan, we cannot utilize it. Otherwise, we will roast the patient with radiation. So we, we cannot do too many. Now, uh, the key point is that if a lesion washes out, wash out means it becomes darker as compared to the parenchyma. That is taken as a bad sign. Uh, on the other hand, if the patient does not wash out, look here, it is it is enhancing and venous phase still enhancing, it is still retaining contrast, then it is a good sign, it is a P9 lesion. On the other hand, a malignant lesion, look at this, this is a metastasis, arterially enhancing, then even here, you look carefully, it has shown some washout, and here the washout is very clearly seen. So, once you pick this up, means malignant, it can be a HCC versus uh, versus uh, metastasis and cholangio, etc. Now, on the other hand, there are other concepts which you can, on MR or clinically speaking, you can use this hemangioma. There is a particular type of hemangioma. We call it a flash hemangioma. That will be uh, that will be uh, bright uh, on T2 weighted sequence. It might show restricted diffusion on DWI sequence, and uh, with and the signal intensity will be equal to blood pool on all phases. So if you look inside the lesion, the signal intensity will be equal to uh, the blood pool means the portal veins and the hepatic veins. Now, FNH versus adenoma is a very important discriminator. Please remember, pathologically speaking, FNH is not a neoplasia. The concept of FNH is that this is a hyperplastic response to a vascular malformation. So there might be a large artery sitting inside the scar. Uh, th those kinds of cases are also, you might see them. And uh, on the other hand, adenoma, have, uh, there, there are multiple types of adenomas. And one of them, they have got a concept of malignant transformation. Key point is, and adenomas can also show, uh, come to you with bleeding. So the key concept is that adenomas, you have to keep an eye, at times you advise surgeries, and in exam scenario, please remember an adenoma which will come to a &E with spontaneous bleeding. FNH is a very good news, and once you diagnose it, then you forget about it. So uh, this sign can also be seen on contrast ultrasound, by the way. Uh, we call it black is bad sign. And please remember it.
in the real world there are some pitfalls of these washouts etc and some of the tumors they do not behave what i have told you that's a disclaimer uh, nothing in radiology is perfect we should understand that but uh, adenomas uh, fibrolamellar hcc cholangio hcc capsule etc there are pitfalls but i am not going into the details of this now coming back to mri uh, candidate uh, to you should have asked you know that because this is not done routinely right you should have asked that i want to uh, instead of me asking you if you want to check this you you will say usually mr liver is done by uh, using normal gadolinium we call it extracellular agents and sometimes we can do hepatocyte specific agents so in the world there are two hepatocyte agents which are uh, right now in vogue uh, in uk we have got uh, this one this is uh, from bear it is known as primovist in usa it is known as uovist the the key feature for you to remember is that it has got a hepatobiliary phase key feature is that 50% of this is excreted through the liver but it takes about 20 minutes delayed phase so you must do delayed phase and key concept to remember so forget about this one because we don't use this this is 60 minute delay we just use this and this is the usual protocol which we follow uh, of course there can be some variations we do t2 highly t2 weighted in an opposed phase uh, in an opposed phase uh, to look for fatty Uh, and the candidate did where we are uh, picked up fatty change in this case then we do diffusion weighted sequences we use various kinds of p value look at the highest p value this is the adc adc is too grainy usually we just eyeball it on diffusion anything which remains bright on highest p value this can be a sign of malignant lesion or it might be a hemangioma please remember that hemangioma is a b9 lesion but will show high signal on high b value just like this spleen now after that we do a fat saturated t1 pre contrast then we use an auto injector we give uh, and we do arterial phase venous phase 3 minute delay 5 minute delay 10 minute delay this is with usual uh, gadolinium when we are using hepatocyte specific contrast uh, then we use a 20 minute delay phase in which it excretes please remember that the key concept is that fnh have got normal hepatocytes there can be a central scar but otherwise there are normal hepatocytes which can show excretion uh, on the hepatobiliary phase adenomas do not behave like this so till delayed phase uh, till 10 minute adenomas and fnh as far as just contrast enhancement is concerned uh, there will be arterial enhancement and no washout so now you are sure that this is adenoma or fnh and it is not an flash hemangioma because of other features which i told you like high t2 value where restricted diffusion etc uh, now then you do a hepatobiliary phase to discriminate between the two this is from literature uh, uh, from strat dx where you can see that this is an fnh and this is a hepatobiliary phase where it retains control the central scar does not please remember many fnh will not have a central scar so it's not a must for a uh, uh, this thing to have a central scar this is again from literature where the lesion is arterially enhancing there is a central scar uh, and central scars by the way can be in more or less every tumor uh, now it does not show washout but on hepatobiliary phase it shows washout so here it is b9 and then it is an adenoma and not an fnh uh, this is a case in which uh, the patient had breast carcinoma 
and multiple focal lesions on imaging they were worried about metastasis but on hepatobiliary phase you can see contrast retention means these were multiple fnh so coming back to our case now this lesion was low signal on t2 weighted sequence then uh, we have got a this is a in phase and this is an a post phase a post phase you have to develop your eyes examiner is not going to tell you this this is an a post phase you have to pick it up how will you pick it up if you look at the outline of the various organs they have got a black line and this is known as india ink artifact or etching artifact look at, around the spleen around the kidneys etc and we can see actually you should have access to both uh, side by side but you can uh, make out that this is the signal intensity of liver and on the opposed phase it becomes black means it is lot of fat inside so there is fatty change now this is pre contrast t1 weighted sequence it is fat saturated uh, and uh, this is the lesion somewhere here and then uh, we have got arterial phase and on arterial phase if you if you see look at the cortex and the medulla there is differentiation between the two and the lesion enhances though there are there is blood in the a uh, portal vein so this is a what we call a late arterial phase and then we have got a venous phase look at the cortex and medulla of the kidney and you will appreciate that they have become you know uh, uh, of similar intensity now look at this thing is retaining contrast and we have got more delayed we have got 3 minute delay we have got then 5 minute delay and we have got 10 minute delay now uh, we and finally we have got the 20 minute delay in 20 minute delay first of all you have to develop your eyes how will it behave you can see that the csf the correction the cbd has got a uh, high signal and this is excretion of contrast and you can see that the gold bladder has got some bit of contrast you will see a bit of contrast in the duodenum also now on this phase you can see that there is some enhancement retaining of contrast and the central scar is not retaining so this is an fnh so please remember fnh is an exam case hepatobiliary specific contrast though you might not have seen in your day to day practice Uh, the problem with this is it is about 118 pounds you know this uh, one bottle of this and the other one i think is 9 pounds or 11 pounds something like that it's very expensive you cannot use it with each and every case but it has come in the exam you should know this concept and you have to ask the the examiner that i want to see it on uh, this phase Dr. Kam, please, uh, can I ask a question, please? Yes, please. Uh, in in mids, also, can we have some uptake in the primo vest in the delayed phase? No, 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 not at all. Even and, even, uh, even peripheral, uh, we cannot. No, okay. no, never. And by the way, now we use hepatobiliary specific contrast. Just remember the main physiology and the pathophysiology you can make up. If there are normal hepatocytes. it will show or retain an, uh, it will show high uptake on hepatobiliary phase a hcc will not have normal hepatocytes a metastasis will not have normal hepatocytes now we have started using hepatobiliary specific contrast in you know uh, in cirrhotic nodules particularly if there is a suspicion of suspicion of um, hcc and we have as a routine in difficult cases we we use this because it will be a filling defect it's a very black and white word and the filling defect means metastasis and please remember colon cancers in colon cancers 
is one cancer where if there are liver metastases they will remove the metastases and they will remove the cancer and the results are very good so they want to know the segmental anatomy and we we now some of the studies have told us that it should be used and we use it as a you know whenever needed in in lyrates classification of focal lesions in cirrhosis etc this is now known as an ancillary feature ancillary feature and uh, and uh, so hepatobiliary specific just remember there are no hepatocytes it will be black black is bad yes. black yes. is bad. so that is how it is so lyrates uh, lyrates like system also dr kran are used in uk or not lyrates uh, like no we don't use it uh, nobody is going to ask you uh, but uh, uh, but uh, i i just mentioned it because if if there is a in clinical practice that is slightly beyond to be you know frcr world is a frcr world and yeah. that's why i don't teach beyond frcr that is slightly beyond but the point is that in a cirrhotic nodule if it is an hyper enhancing lesion and you are not very sure is it washing out or not you know literature have told you that you can pick up 2 cm i in my teaching files i have got cases of 7 mm which we have picked up yes because of this and they have been confirmed it is common sense how because in that 7 mm of nodule there are no hepatocytes and uh, you know it it gives you the answer so uh, so the point is that i was just answering your question but for your 2b world forget about it nobody is going to ask you thank you to come yes 2b is smaller you know simpler than this okay now uh candidate 2 yeah 2 my god we have lost too too much time actually this was a bit longer shit isn't it was uh, yeah because you know the two cases are uh, in infantile cortical and this lesion so yeah both both were yeah so both we will was, uh, speed yeah. up we will speed yeah. up okay and yeah there there is another case also there where i will do a bit of teaching but i want to speed up now okay yeah. so uh this patient has got uh upper abdomen pain and has got uh upper abdomen pain and has got hypoglycemic attacks over to you Okay, I'm presented with a uh, axial uh, CT scan on the bottom venous phase. I'm trying to try, trying to request. Yeah, I'm requesting. Sorry, again. Yeah. Yeah. CT scan of the abdomen. Just look at the pancreas, please. Yes, yes. Um, in the bottom venous phase. Can can you adjust the window again, please, Doctor Kerr? Yeah, I will. I will make it for you. Here you are. Thank you. Yeah. So in the what to venous phase, I'm checking the pancreas. This is the ultimate process. The head, um, the tail, and the body. There is uh, nothing significantly enhanced. Although I would see it on the arterial phase, it's much better delineated if it is abnormal. uh it's tiny it's i'm giving you the arterial phase now see it okay sorry this Yeah, I can see there is a tiny enhanced lesion on the tail of the pancreas. It's a very small lesion, about less than one centimeter. It's intensely what is, enhanced. What is yeah. your conclusion? So this is an islet cell tumor, the, most likely in the setting of hypoglycemia. This could represent an insulinoma. It's an islet cell tumor, uh, neuroendocrine what tumor. What do you advise? So uh, this patient also uh, might benefit from an octreotide scan. Uh, for further uh, confirmation of this lesion, uh, technician NDM uh, 111 octreo scan uh, for uh, further delineation of uh, the lesion, and if there is any other metastatic lesion within the uh, the liver or 
not seen on the CTA. And then, uh, then what are you going to advise? So this patient uh, will be referred to, uh, uh, if he had symptoms, uh, it will be referred to, uh, be discussed on the uh, MDT uh, this, uh, meetings um, for a possible uh, uh, surgical resection of this mass. Can this be a malignant lesion? Yes, it can. It can be a malignant what lesion. What are the chances of malignancy? And selenoma is uh, less, less likely to be malignant, but gastrinoma is uh, is more malignant. So, in, in what the, are the chances of an insulinoma to be malignant? Insulinoma, uh, I think it's uh, from 10 to 20 minute, 20 uh, percent only. Okay, thank you. Pancreatic tumors can be divided into, so, so by the way, the differential, so the diagnosis was that it was a neuroendocrine tumor, insulinoma. Nobody can say it's an insulinoma, but I, I gave you the history. Otherwise, I would have just uh, refrained from giving you the history. Uh, now, uh, this is, the tumors can be solid and cystic. Solid pancreatic carcinoma and pancreatic neuroendocrine tumors. This is from your book, Solid Pancreatic Lesions. Look at this hypovascular. Now, pancreatic carcinoma is hypovascular, and that is why it is hypodense as compared to the parenchyma. And then there are hypervascular tumors. And uh, neuroendocrine tumors uh, are extremely important for your exam, extremely important. And they can be hyperfunctioning and they can be non-functioning. Please remember all of them, all of them can be malignant. But the rate of malignancy in insulinoma is less than anything else. It is 10% only. But other than that, look at this one, you know, 100% malignant, more than 90% malignant. So you ideally, in an ideal world, you advise to get rid of them. And these days, even your answer that I will do a nuclear scan is fine, but people don't do a nuclear scan in the context of it. They just, you know, get rid of it. Uh, but of course, your answer is correct. If you want to elaborate that, I want to rule out this. You have to remember this. This is extremely important for your exam. Uh, in, in the case which I showed you, I actually told you it was a leading history, which at times the examiners are not going to that much. It was a satisfaction of search type of a case if I give you in the exam. And then I will give you a hint, look at the pancreas, you know, that kind of a thing. But you have to, the I see what the mind knows. And what is written here, you must remember. Gastrinomas, uh, uh, multiple in 60, what is it? Multiple in 60%. So you should, uh, you, you should uh, look, once you pick up one lesion, look for another lesion and look for gastrinoma triangle. They can be outside the pancreas, they can be outside the duodenum in this triangle. And then look for other, uh, you know, uh, look at this extra pancreatic 50%. And there are, you know, men one and men two. Remember these. I don't want to go into this for your long cases also. Remember, they can show you cases from men one, men two, uh, a combination of all of these. Please re uh, revise these, MEN1 and MEN2. Uh, pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor, two things which you have to remember, which is slightly different than a pancreatic carcinoma, that they will enhance arterial phase. You see this? And uh, the calcification is more common in pancreatic neuroendocrine tumor. This diagram should be etched in your memory. It's an exam diagram. Remember this. The I see what the mind knows. Remember gastrinomas. They can occur within the pancreas. They can occur in the, you know, intramural, in the duodenum. They can occur outside the duodenum. If you don't know this, a gastrinoma sitting here, you will not pick it up. And a gastrinoma sitting here, you will not pick it up. So, with gastrinoma, for example, this is an arterially enhancing tumor, which is actually projecting inside the duodenum. 
it it shows a bit of low you know a washout type of a thing uh, on uh, venus phase washout uh, don't worry about it because it enhances here with that rugal fold if the rugal fold are thickened look for uh you know that is what we call zollinger zollinger ellison syndrome and with that i think i've shown you quite a few cases in previous sessions uh gastric fold thickening and in zollinger ellison syndrome due to a gastrinoma causing excess uh so must remember this uh now going back to the case so i so i warn you that in a classical scenario the examiner is not going to be so helpful image initially the examiner is going to see your protocol then might give you a hint look at the pancreas for example even on this venous phase this is a venous phase actually the lesion can be seen here and as soon as you see it you ask for an arterial and on arterial it is better seen and then as soon as you see it uh you know i i